What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial. So today I'm going to teach you how to use a hidden geometry on a curved face to create kind of an overlapping scale design. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to draw a pair of circles. So the first circle you're going to draw standing up and you're going to want that to be a 12 sided circle. So just tap that C key. Um, type in 12 and hit enter that'll set the number of sides to 12 and then you're gonna tap the right arrow key to lock this to the red axis and we'll go ahead and call this we'll call it an 18 inch circle for right now and actually I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna change the number of segments on this circle to 18 so just select the perimeter of this um, go up in the entity info where it says segments and type in 18. You can see how that adds to the number of segments in here. Then we're going to come in here and we're going to draw another circle in the middle and that's going to be a 12 sided circle. And uh, we'll just draw it out. It doesn't really matter how far you go with it. Then select this face. Come over here to the follow me tool and click on your circle to extrude that in a circle. And you can see you've got kind of a blocky circle in here and that's kind of what we wanted so now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here we're going to turn on hidden geometry in our sphere that we created so you can see how when you turn on hidden geometry you can see all the hidden faces that make up this circle so what we're going to do now is we're going to come in here and we're actually going to unsoften a couple of these lines right now so the reason these show up as kind of dotted lines that don't show up with hidden geometry is because sketchup has turned them into soft lines or lines that kind of get hidden that don't really intersect with other geometry but you can turn that off by selecting them like this and then unchecking the box that says soft so you can see how now that actually shows up as a real line as opposed to a dotted line so we're going to do that for both of these just like this then you're going to right click on this line and divide it um, and you're going to divide it into three segments just like this so once you've done that you're going to come in here and you're just going to draw you're just going to draw lines to these different points right here so basically what we're doing is we're using this face of this circle to create geometry that we're going to be able to come in here and use later so once you've done that you can come in here and uh, you can select this and make it a component and uh, go ahead and just click create and the reason that we're doing that is now we're gonna come in here and uh, we're gonna go ahead and delete our circle out because we don't need it anymore so and I would actually leave this 12-sided uh, circle that was in here but basically what you're gonna do is now you're gonna use the rotate tool in copy mode and you can see how you can use you can use this uh, circle over here as kind of your base so basically what I'm doing is I'm selecting this object then I'm using this as my center point so the center of my circle and then I'm moving to one edge of this segment clicking on it and then tapping the control key to activate copy mode so I click on that and then I type in times 11 so X 11 and I hit the enter key and you can see what that did is that came in here and it can it created um, 11 copies of this in a circle along with your original for 12 total so now you've got these um, fully circular just like this and since these are components you can come in here and you can push pull them a little bit um, in order to adjust them and the other thing I want to do is I want to come in here with the scale tool and I want to adjust this just a little bit up um, just so these are a little bit taller and you can kind of adjust this to personal preference I mean the whole point of this video is more as a uh, as a uh, principles tool than an actual model thing so you can kind of adjust those the way that you want so play around with that you can see how you can do different things with that so you can make kind of the spinning spiraling type thing if you wanted to so you can create a lot of different effects in here by messing with uh, with these objects so I could come in here and I could use the move tool and move stuff up and down to create some different shapes and stuff like that so there's a lot of different things you can do but for now what we want to do is we want to come in here and we just want to push pull this shape uh, probably about a quarter inch just like this and so all that's doing is that's giving this some depth and then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna come in here we're gonna select this object we're gonna click make group just like this and we're gonna use the move tool in copy mode to move these straight up and down so basically what you want to do is you just want to select on this object and you see how if it's not in copy mode it's just going to move everything but if you tap the control key then it's going to move a copy up or down and what you want to do is you want to tap the up key on your keyboard to kind of inference lock this um, so that it's locked to the blue axis and so 
go ahead and move that group down and then we're going to use the move tool um, and when you have this group selected and actually before we do that come in here and make this a component just like this so we can call this group of scale so make that a component that way later on if we decide we want to change this we'll be able to change things really quickly but so go ahead and make your copy um, just like this and then uh, select that group that you just created tap the M key and you can see how when you select a group like this and you uh, activate the move tool there's these little red crosses in here that you can use to kind of rotate your shapes just like this and you can see how your uh, geometry is um, your geometry as is is kind of intersecting with your face poorly um, you see how it's too far out here so all you're gonna do is you're gonna move this down just a little bit so just click on this point activate the move tool just move it down till you can't see geometry moving through your shape anymore that's all you really need on this one so you can see how it's got kind of this overlapping scale shape just like this so and then once you do that remember the nice thing about this is since we made all of these out of components if we wanted to come in here and adjust things and make our uh, make our uh, design a little different we can definitely do that as well but for now we've got this kind of in place the way that we wanted it and uh, the nice thing about this now is you can select both of these move them down the way that you want them and remember to lock this to kind of that blue axis when you do this but you can move this object down about where you want it which gets a little tricky with the way everything kind of locks in here um, because of all the inferencing and stuff like that it may be easier to just kind of move your mouse out here um, away. so just lock your inference to the blue axis by tapping the up key and then move your mouse out away from this just like this and then once you made that copy you could type in something like times 10 and it would make 10 copies of this object just like this. So you can see how you've got kind of this overlapping scale design just like this. So, and there's a lot of different things you could do with this. If you wanted to come in here to each one of these components, and for example, if you wanted to add like a pipe around each one of these components, like a 12-sided pipe, You could come in here with like a lines to tubes extension or something like that and uh, add that to add those tubes on the face of each one of those and you can see how that'll kind of show through just like this and you'd have to be kind of careful um, you would probably want to plan ahead a little bit better on how you wanted to do that but it gives you a lot of different options for things that you can do so anyway this is just one of the many things that you can do with hidden geometry and SketchUp but you could really kind of get creative and do a whole lot of different stuff with this if you wanted to so anyway, that's where I'm going to end today's video. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Um, was this just a little too high level for you? Or do you like the kind of principle videos? This isn't necessarily something that I've seen. It's just kind of a shape that I was thinking about creating. And so I made it. So just leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. I love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps even if it's only a dollar a month that just helps me keep bringing you great sketchup content but in any case thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and i will catch you in the next video thanks guys